Hey Dave, thank you so much for being with me on the Purposeful Mindset Podcast. Man, I'm so excited to have this conversation with you. I, I just, just before I started uh, and clicked record, as you know, I had no idea what it is that you do. <laughs> I was confused. I was like, looked at your bio, looked at your website. I was like, quantum something and I'm already lost because I was terrible at science and I was like quantum fund what like what is this and I looked into it obviously for me coming from the kind of background I come from it was very I'm a very simple guy so looking at that really confused me and I was like what does this all mean like I was reading your bio I was like understand trying to understand your company I was like I don't understand and luckily obviously talking to you it gives me much more of an insight because I'm more of a visual learner or like a I, I, I like either physically learning or visually learning and as you explained to me what it is that you do I was like oh well that's pretty simple why couldn't you just say that on the website that makes sense sense. (laughs) but man I'm so grateful to have you on the show and to have your time as well um I want to I want to get straight into it man I really want to I'm just going to be listening mode I kind of want to share I want you to share with my listeners um basically your top five life lessons right from the from your journey from your business from all the incredible things that I've seen on your website that you've done like what are the things that you you can share or you think in your life has helped you become the person the leader that you are today that can help everyone listening like instantly take action great i'd be happy to talk about that uh and as i explained earlier i'm i I just wrote a book it's publishing at the end of the year it's it's going to be called innovation in translation and it's how big ideas really happen and it's about my journey and life lessons of how to, to design and develop a medical device and get it to market um and I think the first life lesson that's taken me probably decades to learn is to really be part of a team. Uh, I, I grew up playing sports since I was a kid. I played baseball and then ice hockey living in New England. And, uh, you know, you, you know, I didn't play golf or tennis. I didn't do those individual sports. I was always part of a team. And you realize quickly that, you know, you can't be a pitcher on a baseball team without having a good shortstop and good first baseman. You know, you just can't do it yeah. all by yourself. And, Business is a team sport, uh, especially in, in the medical device world. You can have a person that's a fantastic designer that does great things in manufacturing, but if you don't have a real problem to solve, then you have nothing. So you can't be creating solutions for actually nothing. So the physician is also part of the team. That physician is the true innovator on that team. Will would then come to a, you know, a person like me, an engineer like me and say, I got this problem. Uh, I'm trying to do something in this procedure and I I keep failing or there isn't something available. So we have a a team approach where we would sit down and hear the physician's problem, get the true design inputs, uh, you know, the size it has to be, the strengths it has to be, the properties, the biocompatibility, things like that. And then we have a team here that can do the design work, the engineering work, the prototyping, the manufacturing, the product testing, the uh, sales and marketing. Uh, and then at, at, at the end, once you get it into the marketplace, you have to sell the company. Mm-hmm. And that's a business attorney. So, you know, if you don't have, you know, a, a team in place, then you're not going to be successful. Uh, you know, you look at guys like Elon Musk and uh, Zuckerberg. I mean, there's a team behind them yep. or with them, standing with them. You just don't really see those guys. So um, it always starts with having a team in place. Um, Then I think the next is, you know, if you're going to design and develop and commercialize something, you have to have a good product or a good service. Um, And and you have to be able to provide that service. So, you know, you know, you know, just making something uh, less expensive than somebody else who already has a good product, that may get you some of the customers, but you really want to solve a problem, provide a product or service that that uh, has meaning, it, it, it does something good. Uh, and fortunately, I work in medical devices. So, you know, healthcare, we're always doing something that actually helps a patient, it helps the physician. Uh, so, you know, and, and sometimes it takes you a long time to figure that out. You're just like, ah, I, I just made something and, and they should just use it because it, it's just cheaper. Yeah, that may serve some of the markets, but you know, you really want to do something new, um, help people that have nothing, you know, there's, there's there's no other option. There's no other you know, a solution. It could be either doing something that makes it easier or just by making a product that hasn't existed yet. So um, you have to really, really do that. Um, then um, I think as, as I've learned, I mean, I'm 52 now, but I'll be 53 in, in two weeks. Uh, you're young still. I'm still young. I think <laughs> I, 
I have decades left to, right, yeah. to, to do what I'm doing. And you know, I, I learned this at an early enough age, but I didn't think I was aware of it. Um, you really got to be authentic. Yeah. Um, and if you can be authentic and be yourself and be a good listener, uh, you know, ask questions. And, and, and sometimes just not saying anything is being authentic because you're really listening, getting, giving someone else a chance to actually speak. But, you know, you know, being authentic, helping people, you know, not expecting something in return, um, that goes spades. I mean, I, I've been on boards, I'm part of foundations now here in Orange County, uh, where there's no compensation. I'm, I'm providing a service, but I'm being authentic in how I'm actually doing it. Uh, I'm trying to bring people together as to continue to build on, on that uh, team approach. Uh, but, you know, if you're yourself in, uh, you know, good things happen, good people want to be around you and create solutions. So, you know, being authentic is, is kind of hard to nail down, you know, what's that mean? You know, sometimes it's, just being calm and being yourself and being and being quiet, you know, uh, yeah. and kind of feel what's around you, you know, versus just having to be the one that has the solution that has the answer. Uh, you know, sometimes you can be in part of a brainstorming meeting and you don't really have anything to say until someone else comes up with a crazy idea. And then that can kind of spark you to come up with something that may be helpful. But uh, I think authenticity is sometimes just a buzzword and it's, mm -hmm. it's uh, downplayed. It isn't taken serious, uh, yeah. but you know, I think being authentic can go a long way and can actually attract people to you. you so, so I have a question. So if, if so, so for someone listening right now, right, just say they do struggle with being authentic. Cause I get a lot of people, for example, say, Hey Sadiq, like how, how do you, like, how are you so authentic in all your content, in your podcast, in your fitness journey, in your Instagram stories and like on social media, like, cause every time someone meets me offline, they like, you're exactly the same person that we see online, you know, because I'm just, I do my best to portray my full self online to people and not try to put on this hat and be all professional with my content. I, I, I speak exactly like how I speak now in all my content, straight with passion, love, energy, and people feel that and they're like, how are you so authentic? So what, how would you answer that for someone like that struggles with being like real and authentic? Um, it's... Not easy for everyone to be authentic. Uh, I mean, I, I've been through life coaching and experiential training. Uh, I, I've been through meditation. Uh, there's something that I learned really just a couple of years ago that's helped me to quantify it. And it's a, a phrase maybe some of you have heard or you have heard. It's called be, do, have. Oh, yeah. Okay. Be the person. Okay. Just be a good person. Be. And some people don't even know how to be. Okay. <laughs> And if you can get centered and be that person, stop trying to prove things yeah. or, you know, go too far or try too hard. Just be. And be is just relax. Be still. Be quiet. Just be. And if you can really be, then you will do great things. Okay. And then you do great things. You will have what you need and maybe what you want. But if you... If you try to do too many things because you want to have, you could still be a terrible person. Right? Yeah, true. So it starts with be, do, have. And that's, that, that's something that every morning I wake up, I, I do breathing exercises only for like 35, 45, 60 seconds. And it calms me down, gets me centered. I breathe through each nostril. I exercise the left and right part of my brain. And it quiets me down and centers me so I can be the person that I am. And I'm not trying to be someone else or emulate, you know, Elon Musk or, or Mark Zuckerberg. I'm, I just want to be Dave. Yeah. And uh, so if you can be, do, have, that's going to create authenticity. I love that. That's a really, I'm, that's the first time I've heard that concept. That's, that, I love that. It's super powerful. I think, I think that's what's going to really help. I, I think it basically comes back to what you said, two things. The first thing is like mindfulness, you know, like everyone, everyone throws this terminology like it's just, it's, it's just a, a fun word. But mindfulness is just being present. It's just being here. Like just yeah. knowing that you're here. You're, you're like right now we're having a conversation. I'm just here one on one with Dave. No distractions. Nobody's around me. I'm so hot, but I'm not even, I'm not even thinking about that right now. Right. right. Like I'm, all I'm thinking about is this conversation that I want to get the most out of Dave's, uh, Dave's time. I want to get the most value from you. And I'm just listening because I'm just here. I'm just being me 
and, 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 just, and I just want to take the most out of this and get everyone else to get the most value. So I think that's the first thing. And the second thing is, you said it really briefly, um, it's just not worrying about what people think about you, right? Mm-hmm. It's just not, not wanting approval and acceptance from other people. It's just being Dave and just being authentically the person that you want to be without worrying about what's Sarah going to think about me? You know, right. what's Rebecca going to say about me? You know, without worrying about that, just being you, and, and I think, you know, just accepting you, accepting how you are. Yeah, and if you can accept who you are, then, then you're also not going to judge yourself. I mean, exactly. some people torment themselves because they just judge themselves. Yeah. And uh, they just can't be authentically themselves. They just can't be. And, um, you know, it, you know, some people get it when they're young. Some people, it takes them 50 years to get there. And I've been working on that my, my entire life. And it's, I continue to work on that. Be, do, have. Be authentic. Yeah, love that. Awesome. So what would you say is your next kind of life well, lesson along your journey, you know? I mean, I've had several teachers and mentors. Um, and, you know, I, I like to learn new, new things. And I think everybody wants to learn new things. So mm-hmm. the more you can teach people and bring people with you on any project or any type of business venture, then you can, can c- continue the spirit of entrepreneurialism. So you know, teaching, mentoring, coaching, wh- whatever the terminology is, uh, I, I think you have to be that as a business leader. Um, you, you just, you know, you, you just can't be the one that, hey, the buck stops here. I mean, that was probably a phrase from the 80s, right? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't think those leaders lasted very long. So if you can create that, uh, that, that coaching, mentoring, teaching environment, I, I really began to... Uh, uh, follow certain managers that I had. But my my first jobs out of uh, college, I had some great managers. I had some awful business partners. Uh, you know, they were more secretive, and I always felt like, hey, I wasn't getting the best out of this, so they were just using me. I, I don't want to create that kind of toxic environment at mm-hmm. at at any of the businesses that I work at. And I've been essentially working with the same team now since 2007. Uh, mm-hmm. We have the same team now, and we're very. Uh, different but complementary people. You know, I'm, and and we're all engineers, but I'm I'm probably more of in business development now. I have strong relationships with our physicians and customers. Um, I have another partner that does regulatory and quality, but he's also kind of a chief operating officer. I have another person that does all the engineering. He's more of a chief technology officer. I have, I have another partner that does all the manufacturing. He runs the clean rooms. And we all learn from each other. So there's, you know, there's not just one president and CEO. I think we're all general partners. We all kind of share and teach and learn from each other. So that's been something that I probably adopted, you know, 15 or so years ago. And when I was in my, in my thirties and that's a secret. Uh, I just told you it isn't a secret now. (laughs) That's what people should be striving towards is to, you know, work on a team but be teaching each other, coaching each other, mentoring each other. And yeah. uh, tell you, then you look forward to going to the office, you, mm-hmm. or you realize that you're not responsible for everything. You, yeah. you, you can take three or four days off or, you know, go with your kids to school and not have to worry, oh, I, I'm responsible for everything, right? Yeah. If you share the responsibility and you have that good team of mentors, um, and I, I really enjoy that. Um, then, you know, you know, I'd say kind of lastly is, you know, really giving back. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm part of a couple of foundations now. I'm, a, you know, the Orange County chair for the American Heart Association Gala this year. Nice. And, uh, you know, and it's, it's also the, the American Stroke Association. So, you know, it's a, it, it's a title or a role that I don't get compensated for monetarily, but I get, I get compensated for by, meeting such great people that want to do the same thing that I want to do. Just enrich your uh, society, enrich your ecosystem. Uh, and I, I, I've been part of the AHA now here in Orange County, I think for three years. And nice. I've met some fantastic people that are now part of my friendship uh, circle. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I'm, I, I have a busier social life now than I think I did when I was in college. <laughs> or at least it's more meaningful. Because, yeah, it's you know, more, I think you're right. It's more meaningful. I think when you're in college and when we're younger, it's just we're being right we're just having fun yeah, we just, just, being, fun. We're just enjoying, okay. the, enjoying the moment but as we get older and wiser we start realizing 
I only need about a handful of friends that are meaningful and genuine and, and you know, that trusting, loyal and just caring. Like they actually care about you. Yeah, they care about you. Uh, it isn't just wishing you a happy birthday, but they just check in, hey, I'm praying for you today. You're like, what, what happened? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so I think those are really key things that I, I've been striving for and I think um, I'm actually accomplishing them. So, you know, having a solid team environment and anything that I, I do, making sure that I do provide a good service or a good product uh, but, and also make meaning with that, uh, continuing to be very authentic as an individual, you know, practicing be, do, have, um, being that teacher, mentor, coach in every aspect of my life. Uh, I'm at work most of the time, but I have three kids. I got a seven, nine and 26 year old. So, you know, they think this is normal when I do. Yeah. <laughs> I travel all over the world. I'm at home. You know, we're having parties at our house, but, you know, and, and, and then, you know, giving back, you know, really, you know, being part of something that means more to you than just a, a job that you get paid for. You know, I think if you can embrace all of those things and even more, then you'll have an enriched life, a full life. And um, that's what I'm trying to do. I, I love it. I don't even think you're trying to do it. I think you're doing it, man. Doing it. You're doing, I, 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 would change that to, I would change that terminology. I'd be like, you're doing it, Dave. Because I honestly, like, just from listening to your authenticity and like your, your journey, your story, and like really understanding just before the call, like what it is that you do. And as you said, the re and I think the one thing that I really um, respect you for since I've just like started speaking to you today is the fact that you, you genuinely are doing what you're doing in your life right now because it's, it's, it's coming from this internal dream that someone put into your mind as you were, as you were sharing with me, right? Like you started doing this because of some point, someone said something from seeing what you're studying and said, Hey, you're an engineer. Why don't you basically save people's life by creating something in this industry, yeah. this field that can help people because it happened to your grandpa. Right. And I thought he was crazy when he told me, I was like, what? It always seems crazy at the time, right? If someone, Dave, if someone said to me, I'll be a TEDx speaker today, I'll be speaking on stages, I'll be like this confident person get that I have. Right here. Like, I'll get out of here. I'll just be like, what are you talking? Shut up. Like, what? seriously, no way. Not at all. Like, I'm going to me. Hey, yeah, I'm gonna enjoy my food. My, I'm going to enjoy my uh, Red Bull and my, and my crisps on the side and just play Call of Duty with my friends. Never need to speak to a woman. I don't need a girlfriend. I'll get married when I need to get married in the future. Like I just had no, no vision, right? No dreams, no vision. I was just like living in the mm -hmm. moment, enjoying my time. And if someone told me at that time, I'll be here now, have a podcast, content creator, um, TEDx speaker, and all the things that I've done and accomplished. And for me, they're all just titles. Like they yeah. mean nothing. They're just right. a title. Like it was so fascinating to me that when I got given a TEDx speak a title and put that on social media suddenly That's everyone fantastic. thought i'm special now i was wow. like yeah but i was the same guy before i even did that oh that's me. true yeah you know what i, I mean like you. i was the same guy i was doing the same types of events and like just because i spoke at, on that red carpet you just make me you just everyone thinks you're special and i'm just like just, it, the titles mean nothing what means sure. something to us and what why we're doing things in life is number one because we're all dreamers right like we have big yeah. visions big dreams and and we want and the second thing is we want to be of service like we want to help people. of course and yeah. so i always talk about servant leadership and like that's the one thing that i really want people to understand is like why everyone in the world should just be of service forget taking yeah people are fed up of you taking stuff from them and hey come yeah. and buy us that stuff. happens a lot come and Especially take on wall take, street take, take. <laughs> yeah and it's like when you start giving all of a sudden people are a bit confused and shocked like what Dave's given us something for free. Like, no, no, no. What's the, what's the what catch? does he want? Yeah, what does he want? Like, what's in it? What's in it for me? Like, what's what's the catch? There's something there. He wants my email address so he can start selling me stuff, right? Like, you know, they're just so they're so very pessimistic. Yeah. They're always thinking that you want something from them. I think if you just show people you're just authentic, genuine, and you love what you do, and you're super confident about how you're making an impact, that's what really matters in the end, right? Without a doubt, I agree. And then if you can, you know you know, you know, bring people with you, you know, your kids or your friends or your strangers, uh, yeah, then you can really make a change. Yeah. And then there's more people providing services. I, I like that a lot. Love it. Yeah. Basically like inspiring people and uplifting them with you and holding their hands and be like, Hey, come, you can come with yeah. me. Let's go to the top together. You know? Yeah. I love yeah. it. Uh, Dave, I have, a, I have a, I have like a very, before we end the show, I have like this really important question that I want to ask you. 
Okay. okay, and you don't even have a clue what it is, but you're gonna be like, "Damn, that's." But it's important. That's that's important to <laughs> <and it's> you. I can say, imagine. So, so it's important because I think it's gonna help. I think it's gonna it's gonna make you think a little bit, and it's gonna give the the listeners a lot of value. So, imagine that you, imagine that you have been told. Well, let's say you're having a conference. Okay, you are the biggest. Um, quantum fund like hosts one of the biggest events ever, right? Yes. And like, and 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 you and it's gonna happen, right? You're there, right, on yes. the stage, and you're introducing your, um, you know, your your mastermind, the people that you said that you're bringing up with you, or your team. You're bringing them up, and 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 you were told to to say to give them like one sentence, one inspirational message at the end of that night. They're like, hey, Dave, you're gonna have to come up at the end and close the show, and you're gonna inspire someone with the last message. In that event, imagine it's like I don't know ninety thousand people there. Just that's part of my dreams. Speak in front of ninety thousand. <laughs> okay, so what what would that one like? Just like that one sentence be that you will you will share with everybody in that in that crowd? Well, I've said I say this a lot around here, and to some of the young engineers and some of the people who actually work with us, um, that we all have to embrace failure. Uh, failure is part of success. Um, so if you can believe that there's no quitting, okay, you set out to do something, you're going to succeed and you're going to fail. You're going to hit lots of speed bumps and setbacks, but you just have to realize that failure is part of success and you're doing things that other people have only dreamed of or thought they couldn't accomplish. But just remember failure is part of success. And if you have that mindset, then you will succeed without a doubt love that that's powerful deep like that's inspirational that's that's amazing man. i love that i failed a lot so that's why I have to <laughs> clearly say. you have right so you you can confidently say that sentence i know it <laughs> you know it you've lived it like you're wearing the t-shirt i failed so much that's right. so much failure is the um is basically part of success without a doubt yeah i love yeah. that amazing dave honestly man i'm so i'm so grateful that we've got connected um, I'm so I'm so grateful for all the value that you've shared, for all the life lessons, for for just everything that you're doing. I just want to acknowledge it as well, and just I have a lot of respect for you and, and for what you're doing out in the world. And um, and if I can ever be of service to you, your team, or anyone that you know, please let me know because I want to also be part of anybody's success, however I can, even in the tiniest way. And my it. my whole thing is like I never want to take from anyone. I just want to give, give, give. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to become a coach because I was like being a coach for me personally is so meaningful because I get to see a transformation in someone's life from things that I've already gone through and I've, and I've accomplished and help people in their life, their business now, like go to the next level and just me getting right. so much fulfillment and, and just, you know, just that feeling of just impact and meaning. I never care about money and I never, I always say it and I never will. I've always cared about how many people's life or how many people are going to remember me when I'm gone. Yeah. And so that's, what, like that's, that. why I, that's how I do things from the heart. And so um, if anybody wants to reach out to you um, or, you know, email you, message you, they want to find out something about your company or they, wanna, they want you to be their mentor or, and teach them what you're doing, how, what's the best platform they can reach out to you? And I will be all, obviously linking all of your social media and everything in the YouTube link and in mm-hmm. the podcast, but just to, for the listeners anyways, what are the best platforms they can reach you on? Yeah, I think the easiest way to get me today uh, is on LinkedIn. But I also have a website. It's uh, www.quantumfundoc.com. And I have a a, a contact uh, on there and you can send me a message. And that probably links you to LinkedIn as well. But I'm I'm on social media. I know I'm on Instagram. You are. I've added you on everything. So you you are. Very good. Thanks. You're welcome. Yeah, definitely. He's on every platform, guys. Just type in Dave Ferreira and he's there. All so right. I'll be linking everything in the description in the YouTube channel and on the podcast channel. You'll see the, the links to, to Dave. And also when his book comes out at the end of the year, make sure you guys check that out. If you guys are into um, the kind of work that he's, he's doing right now, and maybe you're in the medical field or engineer field, uh, engineering field, I mean, um, definitely connect with Dave and make sure you guys um, just go and ask him a question. Like I'm yeah. sure he'll be so happy that you guys go and message him saying, Hey, I heard your, I, I heard your life lessons and your story from Sadik's podcast. Um, and it was really meaningful and impactful. And I just want to ask you this one thing and just ask him a question. I'll now, reply. Yeah, I'm sure he'll reply. I'm pretty sure he'll, he'll, he'll get back yeah. to you. 
Um, but Dave, I, one last time, just a massive thank you for, for everything that you shared, for all the work that you're doing. Um, and as I said, if I can ever help or be of service, I'm, I'm happy to do so. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. No, nah, you're welcome, bro. Have an amazing rest of your day and I'll, I'll keep in touch with you and, uh, and catch up soon. You too. Fantastic.